Hello, Sector Watchers. Welcome to the show. This is the 93rd episode of Sector Spotlight for Tuesday, the 24th of August, recording it on Monday, the 23rd. My name is Julius de Campenaar and I'm presenting to you from Amsterdam in the Netherlands. Regulars know I love the interaction, so you've got a screen full of handles where you can reach me. Please reach out if you have anything to share, comment, questions, etc. No problem at all. I will try to do my best and respond to each and every one. Um, we have a regular schedule here where we will do on the first Tuesday of the month, a monthly overview using monthly charts for all asset classes and sectors. And on the last Tuesday of the month, we will do a segment on seasonality and we will be looking at seasonality and see what we can learn for the coming month. Now, it's kind of special because today is not the last Tuesday of the month because that's the 31st, that is next week. So next week's episode of Sector Spotlight airs exactly on the last Tuesday of the month. Um, and I know that you know, monthly charts are not completed until the last day comes in. But I'll be recording the next episode of Sector Spotlight on Monday, the 30th, probably after the close. So it's got one more day in that daily bar. So I'm going to take a chance here and I'm going to use today to look at seasonality and see what it holds uh, or what it has in store for us for the coming month of September. And then next month, uh, sorry, next week on the 31st, I'll be discussing the monthly bars of August, which then have one more day to go. So this might completely backfire, but I'm gonna take a chance and do it anyway, because otherwise it'll take another week and it'll be uh, September 7th before we get a chance to look at the monthly bars for August. Probably, you know, when things go really awkward and bizarre, I need to do that anyway. So that's the schedule for today. First, we're gonna take a look at sector rotations and asset class rotations as they are playing out and they played out last week on the daily and the weekly RRGs. Starting with asset classes, weekly RRG. Oh my God, did that completely the wrong way around. We need the daily on the left hand side and we need the weekly on the right hand side. So what happened last week? If we look at the rotations and it's five trading days back, market is now just closed in the US. Um, so it's actually um, last week plus one. That's it. <clears throat> if you look at what we saw in terms of performance, the benchmark is down 30 basis points, minus 0.3%. Not much. Uh, stock market underperforming the benchmark. So stocks were down 0.8% over the last week, crawled up a little bit. If I go back one day, then you see that it was a little bit more than a percent. So today is actually bringing that back up that level. If we look at the rotations, then you see the, uh, the, the, the rolling over of ITOT inside the leading quadrant, now very close to hitting weakening. Um, commodities pushing further into the lagging quadrant. They're, they're really weak at the moment. I mean, the long term, the long term view is still pretty good, but um, short term, a lot of negativity in the uh, in the commodity uh, ETFs minus 4.9 and 6.2. That's a very uh, it's a very rough week actually. And the other asset classes, the uh, the fixed income related asset classes, uh, corporate bonds, government bonds, high yield, picking up, moving opposite of stocks as they usually do, uh, but not not a very significant move as of yet. I think the most important move, and we'll get back to that later, is coming from the US dollar. If we look at the, at the weekly rotations, we see the weakness for commodities um, showing up here. Uh, very long tails now. If you look at those tails, uh, let me put that 
there. So if you put the tails for commodities, you see that they're, they're very long. That's indicating a lot of power behind those moves. They're inside weakening, but they're rapidly heading towards lagging. So um, the long-term bullishness for commodities uh, seems to at least go into a, a period of consolidation or maybe a little correction. Looking at the other asset class, we see stocks um, still picking up, but look at those week-to-week -week observations on the ITOT tail. They're, they're very close together. Um, so that little, that, that move up there uh, in terms of momentum is creeping up, but it's still losing on the relative strength scale. So it's still moving to the left on the RS ratio scale. And, and we see a similar move for GOVT, although on the opposite side, similar for LQD. And then high yield is actually rolling over and crossing into the uh, lagging quadrant. And that's quite interesting because high yield is, uh, is also, a, I, I consider that a risk asset class. So we see some sort of a divergence starting to kick in between high yield and corporate bonds and, and government bonds as they are now inside the improving quadrant. Real estate, still a very high reading on the RS ratio scale, still doing very well. And if you look at the daily rotation to bring that in and blend it in, you see that it's inside lagging, but uh, already picking up again. So we remain quite positive for the real estate. The real estate asset class uh, we are talking about. Now, one thing I want to share with you or, or go in a little bit deeper and already mentioned the US dollar as probably being the most important rotation that's taking place at the moment. We see the, the tail on, on the daily, uh, only the last day and then for asset classes, that is um, this last Friday, um, you see it losing a little bit of its strength there. But here on the weekly, and I'm going to zoom that out and, and blow it up a little bit for you, you see that it's starting to increase. So the the segments but from week to week, they're starting to increase. That's strong. And we're pointing in the right direction. We're, we're at a strong RRG heading. Now, the chart that comes with that dollar index is actually very interesting because it looks like we are completing a, a pretty large, if not to say a massive double bottom in the US dollar index. And that means... Um, strength for the US dollar going forward is a weekly chart. So this is pretty long-term stuff. This is not going to, it's very unlikely that this is going to end um, really, really soon. So, so I'm going to take this as a pretty important signal for the US dollar and going to take the position that the dollar is going to strengthen versus a lot of other currencies in the world. Now, obviously, the most important major cross is for the euro versus the dollar. That's opposite the dollar index. But what we see here is actually something that I think can very well be labeled as a big head and shoulders top. So we see the shoulders here at 120 and 122, 122 and a half. The peak at 123.50 is the head. And then we've got a, a neckline that, that angles slightly upward. And, and that's now broken. That, that neckline is now broken. And according to the rules of a head and shoulders top, a head and shoulders reversal, by the way, this is a perfect place for a head and shoulders to take place. Um, I know there is, don't get me started. There are people who want to see head and shoulders and triangles and double tops and wedges and what have you uh, everywhere on the chart. But not everything that looks like a head and shoulders is a head and shoulder. Not everything that looks like a wedge is a wedge. They need to, there, there are certain rules that those patterns need to, uh, there's certain boxes that these patterns need to tick before they can actually qualify as a proper pattern. And I do think that this, this head and shoulders here uh, ticks all those boxes, especially the fact that it's coming at the end of an uptrend. We're, we're like months and months and months of moving higher. And that uptrend is now ending and reversing. Now, head and shoulder stop is a reversal pattern. And this very much looks like it's reversing that uptrend that we saw from 106 to 123 and a half. 
The breaking of the neckline is the trigger for that head and shoulders to execute and that just happened. Now following the labeling of this pattern as head and shoulders, um, we can apply a target. We can find a price target based on this price formation. And the way you do that is you measure the height of the pattern from the peak in the top, which is, I'm going to round it off, 123.49, I'm going to say 123.40, to roughly 116.7. And you can project that below the breakout level. Now the dotted line here is exactly the length of the dotted line here. So that gives us a target between 110 and 111, 110.70 to be exact. In currencies, in the euro, euro, euro dollar exchange rate, that is a massive move. And it could have big implications for stocks and stock markets around the world. Now, before we're going to round off this segment on asset classes and asset class rotation, <clears throat> and I want to bring in the, um, the RRG for currencies. We don't look at that a lot. Maybe I should do that more because it's, 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 it's important what's going on. Uh, and we do have them on the system. And what you see here is the RRG that shows the rotation for um, the major currencies against the US dollar. And you see that they are all moving left, except dollar yen. It's still to the left, except uh, the or yen dollar in this case. So the yen is the only one that's near term strengthening. All the others are moving to the left. See a little pick up here in the near term, but the big picture is for all of them to move to the left. Um, and that, that basically signals dollar strength. And if you look at the RRG, you can see that this is going on for a while already. I'm going to put it here. You can see that this rotation for here we saw dollar weakness or dollar strength. And now it's dollar weakness. And then you get going around and then when they all start moving to the lower left that means that the dollar is going to the top left because the dollar here is the center of the chart and you see everything moving to the lower left so um, a big move expected for the us dollar um, in terms of euro dollar between 110 and 111 and if you look at the, um, the dollar index if that makes more sense to you then you can probably look at, well, this is 89 and a half to 93 and a half. So that's three, three, almost four big figures that puts us at around 97. Here is some resistance around 95, but I think here that this calls for a reversal of this downtrend and is going to put the, euro, the, the dollar index at least at 97 in line with the, um, 110, 110, 111 uh, that we are looking at in, um, in the euro dollar exchange rate. For the second segment of the show, the, <clears throat> the, um, the look back at last week's rotations for sectors, uh, I'm going to actually merge that together with seasonality. This is sort of in line with each other anyhow. Um, let's quickly do a, um, a roundup of the rotations of last week, including today, let's make it six days. And we see that uh, healthcare and tech are actually uh, topping the list with 1.8%. The index itself up 0.3, so it's pretty much unchanged. A um, couple of weekdays at the start, picking up towards the end, and especially today, Monday was a good day, up around 1%. Um, so, you know, last, week, last week's show was titled Conflicting Signals from Sector Rotation, and I think that's still the case. Um, if, you, if you look at the list here, then 
we see that healthcare and technology and communication services uh, are outperforming together with utilities, which is all of a sudden a very defensive sector. Uh, depends a little bit on how you want to look at technology, whether that's the new defense or, or still offense. But all in all, it's a, um, it's a mixed bag. Going to the right side where we see the, uh, the weekly rotations, it, it's the same. Um, technology and healthcare, both inside the leading quadrant, they're actually, so the, the, the leading, the fact that they're leading on the daily translates well into the position of those sectors on the weekly where they are in the leading quadrant, uh, especially XLV healthcare still on a, uh, a strong ROG heading. Technology rolling over slightly, but still at um, the high, actually the highest reading on the momentum scale. And if you look at the weekly, then actually uh, technology is the second and, and healthcare is the third sector on the RS ratio scale, on the reading of the RS ratio scale in terms of relative strength. Only topped by real estate, but real estate is inside weakening and heading uh, negatively. So it's, it's at a negative RRG heading, still at a very decent RS ratio. So there's a pretty good chance that this will um, curl back up before it hits the lagging quadrant. But for now, I think that tech and healthcare are actually better, uh, especially in the near term than real estate. Communication services close to the benchmark, uh, but heading at a negative RRG heading. And if we bring that up on the daily, then you see it's also close to the benchmark, but picking up, it's almost vertically. So it's pretty much a momentum move at the moment on the daily scale, not so much a pickup of relative strength. Again, all in all, uh, a, a pretty mixed bag. Um, clearest, clearest signal, if you want to talk about that, is probably coming from the energy sector, which is a, uh, a straight move into the lagging quadrant uh, on the weekly RRG. And it rolled over um, in improving, and it's now hitting the lagging quadrant on the daily RRG. Let's quickly go over the, the other sectors. So utilities, uh, quite good. Hooking down here on the last day, real estate close to the benchmark, picking up in line with what's happening on the on the weekly scale. Staples pretty good week, makes sense. Last week, a couple of bad days on the equity market, so staples uh, usually pick up together with with utilities. So that's a good thing. Um, consumer discretionary inside lagging, picking up slightly, but still moving lower on the RS ratio scale. When I put that in line with the, uh, the weekly rotation, then we see that uh, discretionary is insight improving, starting to slightly roll over. We'll have a look at the chart in a minute. I don't like, to, I don't like discretionary at the moment. Uh, we've got industrials rolling over, insight improving on the daily, on the daily RRG. And if we look at the, where is industrials here? It's, it's moving rapidly into the lagging quadrant. So that's, that's the daily here is starting to align with the, with the weekly. That's not a good sign for the industrial sector. And then we have financials rolling over with a long tail. So they're rapidly losing momentum. And on the uh, weekly, it's inside lagging, but slowly picking up. You know what I mean with conflicting signals? They're all over the place. Is that, so the, the weekly and the daily are conflicting. Offense and defense are conflicting. It's not a very clear picture, and that still keeps me um, keeps me on the edge of my seat. Uh, I'm not sure what to make of this. Um, materials rolling over while inside leading. They're down 2.3 percent last week. Go to materials here, then you see it's inside lagging, but picking up a little bit on that weekly tail. Not much. Still moving lower. If you look on the on the RS ratio scale, just used as a reading, you will see that um, materials is actually the, um, the second weakest sector at the moment. Energy is the first or the weakest and then followed by, by materials. So that little pickup in momentum is not enough to become overly enthusiastic, especially not when you, when you look at that rolling over uh, or on that daily tail rolling over inside leading. Uh, and we already discussed the uh, the energy sector. Now let's bring in the seasonality and look at a few uh, look at a few charts. I open up here as my uh, my Excel sheet with the uh, the 3D representation, and if I highlight 
<clears throat> the coming month of September, then um, it's actually interesting to see that there are very little outliers. There's one, and that's for industrials, it's 70%. So 70% of the months of September, industrials actually outperformed the S&P 500 over the last 20 years. Other than that, you know, 40% is not really a really big deal. Um, so the 70 is kind of cool, but that's about it. The rest is like around 50% and that's not, that's not enough to, to make any meaningful uh, judgment call. So, so we're going we're gonna to take a look at the uh, industrials at 70%. That, that may have something, but remember what I just said about the industrial sector. It's got a negative rotation. So again, a conflicting situation. Seasonalities are pointing to industrials as being an interesting sector, but um, the rotation is actually saying something completely different. Now, if we look at the, uh, the relative performance of the, um, the various sectors, and we look at September here, then you see that materials is the, the, the one with a really weak um, expected performance with uh, minus 1% below the S&P 500. Um, but the percentage was crap. Now, industrials was at 70%, um, but the outperformance is 0.2%. So, so industrials, from a seasonal point of view, I think we have to conclude that industrials is the most promising, albeit marginally. The, the percentage of months that industrials closed higher than the S&P, closed higher or above the S&P is high at 70%. The actual outperformance is only um, 20 basis points, up 20 basis points. Now, the most important thing, um, which I actually forgot to show you, is the seasonality of the S&P itself. And if you look at the last 20 years for the S&P itself, you see that September is up 58% of the time, which is okay, not fantastic, but okay. But look at the average performance. That was down 40 basis points. So, so the, the seasonal expectation for the S&P is sort of 50-50, close to 50-50. But the average return was 40 bips lower. So if we go back to the expected performance for industrials, that was 70% of the time higher. But if you look at the performance, it's 20% over the SM, or 20 basis points over the S&P 500. And the S&P 500 is down. So that only brings industrials to minus 20 basis points, which is still not a fantastic move. So, so from this seasonal, the seasonal expectation and the seasonal outcome, I'm not, I'm not very enthusiastic. Let, let me quickly bring in the, um, the, the work, the exper experimental work that I'm doing here on uh, seasonality. And if we, if we look here, remember, for those who have not seen this before, what we're looking for are fat greens or thin reds. That's, that's interesting. So um, the industrials here is, is fat and it's green. It's only 20 basis points. So this is probably the best thing that we can look. And here you can see that maybe communication services is interesting. That's 62%, not fantastic, but 62% is pretty okay. And it's expected to outperform the S&P with 30 basis points. Now there's no thin reds. You know, the, uh, the reds that we see here is 50, 55 basis points, 55% um, here, the darkest one. This is, this is um, minus 10 basis points industrials uh, materials was the one with minus one percent here that's that's the one with minus one percent expected return but it's only 40 percent of the time so that's not really a big thing that's not something that i would you know um make a make a huge call on so from a seasonal point of view i'm, I'm very reluctant to make any meaningful call industrials from a seasonal point of view probably the most interesting bread from the charts 
that's not really what you want to see. And other than that, there are no massive, massive outliers, massive interesting things. Here is um, here's discretionary that's expected to underperform the S&P by 10 basis points, um, but it's at 55%. So again, not, not a fantastic uh, seasonal alignment, something that we can do something with, it's, which is very interesting. Let's have a look at a few charts. Um, here is the here is the S and P chart, which I'm still monitoring, and this is the weekly version. And we're creeping, we're creeping higher, we're creeping higher, but the RSI doesn't really do it. That's it's still on that negative divergence, still keeping me on on, on the edge. I, I I find it difficult. I hope you hear that in my voice. There is no. I don't think there's a clear consensus. Conflicting rotations, conflicting performances, uh, negative divergence, no real signal from seasonality. All in all, a very, very mixed bag and, and enough reason to stay very close to home with your investments. One other chart that came from the asset classes is the one here uh, that shows the relationship between stocks and bonds. And I'm still not happy with that strong negative divergence in this relationship. So I'm definitely going to keep an eye on that one. If we quickly go to, uh, to some of the individual charts, I think we should look at materials. Um, that one is now definitely, you know, it, it put in a new high, um, very weak rotation. Let me bring this to the, to the weekly RRG for sectors uh, and you see it's inside the lagging quadrant picking up a little bit but not much um, technology is still the, the probably the strongest or one of the stronger sectors it's pushing against the breakout in relative strength that's something that we need to keep an eye on it's pushing against the top of the channel it's one of the better sectors at the moment uh, and one thing another sector that is pretty worrisome to look at the rotation is not fantastic here on the um, on the weekly, we're we're in improving, but we're starting to roll over. And if you look at the price chart and look at this look at this um, relative strength line versus the S and P 500, that's just breaking to new lows. Uh, RS ratio is still at pretty low levels. Uh, this high didn't reach the top of the channel. That's a sign of weakness. If we break this trend channel, I do believe that discretionary will uh, start to underperform and potentially accelerate lower. And the final chart that we do need to review is the one for industrials because that was the strongest take from seasonality. If we look at the RRG, we see the week, the daily, the daily tail of industrials insight improving and rolling over. And if we bring in the weekly tail, then we see that it is inside the lagging quadrant and pushing further down the RS ratio scale. If we then go to the individual chart and look at the price chart for industrials, then we see that it is not, has not been able to take out its previous highs. It ran into resistance. It is now challenging its rising support line. It looks as if it's going to break that. It's definitely trying, but look at the relative strength. That is now definitely below its support and moving lower with the RG lines both below um, 100 pushing the industrial sector further into the lagging quadrant. So seasonals and actual rotation are definitely conflicting here. I'd stay away from uh, from industrials uh, even from a seasonality point of view because the chart doesn't synchronize, doesn't support that current rotation. All in all the message remains largely the same. Conflicting rotations, confusing performance, confusing sector rotation, all in all, enough reasons to remain very, very cautious with your investments. I think the most important message for this week is the big turnaround in the US dollar, the completed head and shoulders, the completed double bottom in the dollar index. That's something to keep an eye on in the next few weeks. This wraps up Sector Spotlight. Thank you for watching and please remember Sector Spotlight airs every Tuesday from 10.30 to 11 a.m. Eastern and I'm looking forward to seeing you again next week. Hey guys, Dave Keller here with StockCharts.com. Thanks so much for watching our video. If you enjoyed it and we hope you did, 
hit the like button right below. Also, we have so much new content every day. Consider subscribing to the channel. Just hit the subscribe button in the video or right below. Thanks for watching. Stay safe. Have a fantastic day.